My name's Nick Kyle. I'm from Scotland. I don't know if you can tell that from my accent. And I've had a lifelong interest in the paranormal, starting from when I was uh, a child having psychic experiences and, and experiencing earth energies and a feeling of a presence uh, through university studies where I re uh, did educational research and became eventually a teacher. Mm. Um, I've always had an interest in the evidence-based approach to the paranormal. And uh, as the late Enrico Marabini said to me, Nick, it's, I have a problem, he said, with you using the term paranormal. It's all normal for the people uh, for whom it happens. Mm. And I agree with mm. him. More and more I meet people for whom paranormal or psychic experiences have become part of their way of life. Mm. You say more and more, is it because it's more available on the internet or is there a shift in consciousness that makes it more? I hear lots of people talking about shifts in consciousness. I've yet to hear a good definition of consciousness. It seems to me that everything in life has a structure. So what's the structure of consciousness? So I would want to uh, work on the naming of things and the understanding, not just for semantic reasons, but so that we're using the right words to talk about the, the same concepts. I, I do think there's a shift in consciousness, but I'm not sure that it's enlightening. I see the world is getting darker. Yeah. For me personally, um, it's because I've devoted my, my adult existence. Uh, I shared, of course, with my wife. Um, uh, I've shared uh, an active interest in physical mediumship. Mm. And I've had lots of evidence of interdimensional contact and spirit contact. A term that I still use, but I'm increasingly uncomfortable with. I think there's a lot more to uh, the modern mysteries than... The, the old concept of spirit mm. communication. But is the world getting darker because more people are opening up to spirit and this higher dimension? So it seems like maybe it's possibly getting lighter. Yeah, I think it's a good argument to have and it's a good discussion because I can see both sides. Mm. I, I'm committed, obviously, to the up side, the, 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 the expression of... Um, universal healing love and healing energy coming into our 3D world mm -hmm. and changing it for the better. But, but what I'm more aware of is uh, world and, and national, international movements which are not so good. Mm. So when you talk about paranormal and, and somehow maybe you were born with it, it's something people can learn, how does one become paranormal? <laughs> Well, I think everyone has an intuitive gut feeling and we've got very common, ordinary words for it, but it's nonetheless miraculous. And, and of course, libraries are full of anecdotal stories where people did something that saved lives or didn't do something. Um, uh, for myself and I think for my wife, Sarah, um, we have seen truly miraculous uh, things uh, that would be way beyond the ability of physics to explain them as we currently understand physics. And if it happened once, I would almost dismiss it as a rogue anomaly. But when it happens frequently over 30 odd years, mm. I, I let my skepticism be put to one side. Well, then tell us about some of these miraculous things you've seen. Uh, the school experiments and the fact that we took, place, it took part in two sittings out of roughly 30 odd for invited guests. And at these sittings, as I'll explain, um, we, uh, we saw spiritualist phenomena, but also interdimensional or possibly extraterrestrial uh, communication. Um, precisely the source of what we saw is up for debate. What we saw usurped the laws of science. What did you see? Levitation. Okay. How, Materialization. What, what exactly? Dematerialization. Describe the scene. Describe <laughs> the scene. You're sitting in it. Describe it for the audience. You're oh. sitting, yeah. Um, they're sitting in a darkened cellar of a mansion house in the village of School in Norfolk, where we were invited to join a, a team of four mediums. Certainly two mediums were active. The other two mediums might have had more of an organizational or leading function, recording and so on. 
um, and ten invited guests, of which my wife and I were two of five people from Scotland. And the first time we went, we saw what I would call stunning uh, light phenomena. Um, people see pictures of orbs and uh, they're right to dismiss them as having normal explanations most of the time. <laughs> but no, these orbs. These orbs are self-illuminating, capable of very fast direction and change of direction under intelligent control. And they were physical because they allowed themselves to be touched and go into the bodies of particip participants and come back out. But the second visit, which we were not expected to have, we were invited back for a special experiment, was to bring in extraterrestrial craft. Mm -hmm. And they materialized in the middle of the small room. Uh, and uh, uh, as they moved above the central coffee table, their lights focused on objects on the coffee table. And as they spun round at roughly this speed, the lights never left their target. Now, I think that any human being would find that difficult. You know, you've maybe got four lights underneath and several lights on top, and it never crashed, it never bumped, it never showed any instability. So how do you explain it? And the, the, the answer is, I can't explain it. I did think about holographic light uh, systems, uh, and I spoke to some people at Sony Pictures uh, in, in a movie that I, I did some uh, driving for. And they said, you need constant line of sight, you need oil dampened platforms, you need three cameras, and it, your object may still blur if it's in fast motion. Well, none of these things, of course, were possible in that mm. small space, mm. uh, especially when objects appear, lights appear to go through objects and into my wife's uh, rib cage as well. Um, and I grabbed one of these lights with permission and I could feel it bouncing in my hand as I turned my hands. The light was coming through my fingers, but there was no wire attached, no nylon gut or anything. And uh, the craft were, were really impressive. Uh, they, they were approximately 18 inches to two feet in size. Uh, one looked like the classic uh, flying saucer shape, dome topped. Another would be a, a V-shaped uh, craft, uh, a triangular craft that, that's become more popular in recent years generally. Uh, but there were other things like a Chinook helicopter with no blades on top, mm. just that bulbous end and carrying something underneath. And as the helicopter, I'm calling it, uh, moved like this, what it was carrying underneath moved mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So you could tell that there was a connection mm -hmm. and there were aerodynamics uh, involved. But again, uh, a triangular slice of cake, as it were, we are two sharp uh, ends and a bulbous end mm -hmm. and uh, a, a cylindrical tube. Uh, and I don't often talk about this, in which when you look down it, you got the impression that it may be two feet long or two and a half feet long but it looked, as you looked through it, as if it was going down five, six, seven feet. Mm -hmm. And then a pair of tiny hands emerged from the tube and made a, what I call a supplicating movement with the hands to each of the sitters. Wow. Right? And it was self-illuminating, huh. with no one holding it up. Or... This phenomena that you witnessed, did it shift your consciousness, or besides being amazed, did it do something psychically? I don't think it did anything psychically as such. I think it did shift my conscious awareness that such things are possible. And since then, I've gone to various countries in the world, uh, meeting up with shamans and mediums and, and healers and trying to better understand this thing that it's so easy to take for granted. Mm -hmm. And yet the person in the street, Joe Public, mm -hmm. they maybe believe it can't happen. Mm -hmm. Whereas I've lived my life with that happening. Right. You know, in my interviews with Stanley Krippner, he talks about a ports, things yes. appearing. Have you, what's your experience with that? Well, in the school experiments, there were hundreds of apports, as we call them. But um, generally, I haven't had an awful lot of apports. Uh, sm a few small objects uh, over my uh, 30 odd years. But what I'm interested in is two way communication. I, I don't want a, a penny to drop. I want to hear something. Perhaps mm -hmm. my old, my grandmother, who was one of the first people to speak to me. Mm -hmm. And I was worried, I'm the son of a clergyman, and I was worried that God was speaking to me or, or that I was losing my mind. Mm -hmm.